So let's uh, go back to what we were speaking about. Hank got this one. So let's see if I can find Hank here somewhere. All right, Hank, what did Nakamura play? Please let everybody know which is the best move here. Just to recap what we saw last time. Um, feel free to move the pieces, uh, Hank. Yeah, so that's the move. I must say, when I look at this, it's not what uh, I would like to play uh, if I look at the position just quickly. Maybe you could see, say this is a difference between uh, a uh, uh, scientific approach and an intuitive approach. Because, okay, I'll just mute everyone here. Uh, mute. So, uh, this move is very strong. Don't get me wrong. It's the best move. That's why we looked at this. However, uh, it's not so easy for me to play it, but... Uh, we're all learning, right? We're all picking up new ideas. And here Nakamura shows us that. And Hank also shows us that. In this kind of position, now we have a fantastic diagonal for our bishop. So I think what Nakamura played here was queen c3. And then he put the bishop on b2. And, and uh, yeah, black was uh, better in this. White was better in this position, sorry. White was better. However, if we play in the other way, if we play here instead d3, you can see that actually black is rather comfortable here. They have pressure on the e-file. You know, this is a typical situation in the Maroxi structure when you can take like that. Uh, Black could play something like bishop g4, I think we said last time. Then they have to protect it. We play c6 so that the bishop is not so menacing anymore. It's true that we can put the bishop here and you might claim that the d4 pawn is a weakness. However, white doesn't have that many pieces which can attack it. So you can imagine something like queen d7, rook d8, maybe. As far as I can see, white's bishop pair is not that great. However, what uh, White played in the game, e3, it's a diff completely different story. It's a very uh, hostile move, you can say, a very aggressive move. White is really saying that, hey, I want this diagonal for me. And that's exactly what happened uh, when we looked at this last time. So I don't know if there is any, anything else uh, to, it, to this. Uh, uh, something about helping our bishops to, to become strong, right? Move like, like e3. Uh, we said also that black has no dark square bishop, so it makes a lot of sense to work on look also on the dark squares all right so this is our third installment about uh, pawn play very welcome everyone let's have a look at how we can use our pawns in different ways uh, transforming the position to our favor i'll start with something rather simple today uh, this is a game which was played in the us a few months i, I think or, or maybe a little more uh, we have with white pieces Bajarani and black is Theodoro. So in this uh, King's Indian position, white has just played the move b4. I would like to know how uh, you would continue here with the black pieces. I'll just ask you, I think, for, for one move and uh, you'll uh, figure out the rest. All right. So one minute, black to play. Let me know how we should continue here with the black pieces. All right, Chess all right, you got it very quickly. Yeah, this is a warm-up, strategical warm-up, just to see if you're awake. Good work by Amazon. Uh, let's see here, Giri, if you play like that, I think I have a strong pawn move, actually. Pikachu, you got it. Hank, you got it again. Great work. Troy Boy as well. Mega Charts Rex, Hong Pao. Yeah, this was not so difficult. Uh, if you play the King's Indian, by the way, these things are just very, very important. Means ranks makes your yem quirky strategic simmer. Aha, tactical magician. You got it. Um, that's right. Maybe one minute was too long time for you. <laughs> it's uh, simple for you guys. That's great. Chess knight, you got it also. So it's a, it's about trying to find a good way for us to play and also about how to prevent our opponent from uh, reaching the same situation. So, uh, Chess Samurai, you were fastest here. You can show us this very quickly. What would you play? Okay, so we're going to go c5. Um, obviously, like, if he goes pawn c5, uh, I mean, after c5, yeah, pawn c5. Oh, I thought you were saying if white goes c5. No, you're speaking about black here. Yeah, if white goes pawn c5. Ah, if I play b5, for example. Yeah, b5, then knight c7, and then ne next move is knight e6, knight b4. Exactly. We have a fantastic outpost. You can see that white's knight is very far from uh, the same square in, white, in black's camp. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, right. And if I play something like a3, I mean, the, sorry? Yeah, I mean, yeah, probably bishop f8 here. Or so, I don't know, sorry, not bishop f8, just bishop f6. Aha, uh -huh, the pawn is, uh, is maybe hanging in that case. Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, maybe you don't even want to trade this pawn for, if we speak about your variation. I'm just saying, no, maybe you don't want to swap the, yeah, these pawns because you're already strategically better, probably. So once you feel that you're uh, in the driver's seat, you don't want to change too much the position, I guess. So, yeah, bishop uh, should be six. Bishop e6. Yeah, oh, I think. Actually, no, sorry, but bishop b7 is probably better. Sorry? Bishop b7. Bishop e7. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's what he played, right? Yeah, that's what he played in the game. So, just, uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Chess Samurai. Just to go back to the beginning here to see if we understand this correctly. You can see that there is a slight co conflict here. We could, of course, say that, okay, we have one piece left to develop. Some people are saying bishop e7. But if we play that, then we haven't checked what our opponent is up to. We talked about this. Sometimes we can use our pawns to restrict our opponent's play. It's pawn play, exactly. So here, white can, can use their pawns in a smart way. You can see that the knight is now in a bad place, and maybe there is some trick with c6. I don't know. This is not what black wants, of course. So actually, the move c5, which uh, Chess Samurai was explaining, not only are we fighting for this uh, fantastic square on d4, we're also preventing white's plan of playing c5. I have a question. C can you play rook d4 immediately? Rook d4. I would like to say, I understand your move, uh, tactical magician, but don't forget what I just said. Once you have a strategical advantage, don't spice up things too much. Try to keep it simple. If you play like that, I, my first impression would be to take, and then I'll put my queen on d2. You must have something really great here for this to make sense. I'll, else I'll put my bishop on d3, and I will just claim that I'm it changed up. So yeah, c5. I'm not saying that this is bad for black. I'm just curious about if this is really better than, than the other way. Because in a way, your strategical sacrifice in the spirit of Botvinnik, it's uh, making sense because it's a close position and you're, you have the bishop pair and so on. I, I get the point. But uh, maybe in some other situation, this would be our best shot, if you see what I mean. Maybe some other Petrosian, you know, the Reshevsky petrosian game. Maybe there it was the only chance to sack the exchange to keep the balance. But this is not the case here. We already have a nice position. So it's great that you have discover this move. It's, it's great that you have noticed it, but uh, it's not really necessary at this point. C5 is simply much stronger, and that's what the Greek Grandmaster played in this game. So, yeah, B5 is, is ugly, no, due to knight C, C7 and going to C5. Uh, if pawn takes, I'm pretty sure that uh, Chess Samurai was going to take with the knight, because in this case, the knight is improving, it's attacking the pawn, we're of course happy to get the bishop pair and so on. So in the game, they played A3, and just like Chess Samurai guessed, Bishop b7 was played in this game. Natural move, connecting the rooks, and uh, also, yeah, winning a tempo by hitting the pawn on e4. So white played here, knight e2. And here comes a move which I like very much, because if you look carefully, you can see that white is not going to play d5. They don't want to play d5. They want to keep the pressure against c5, right? Because they know that if black moves the knight, they couldn't take, and yeah, black might lose a pawn here. After all, unless you want to sack a piece or sack a pawn or something like taking an a 96. Probably this is not bad for black either, but okay, it's not that needed. So Titan Chess is proposing here to play the move Bishop F8. And that's very, very similar to what happened in the game. I guess that if you play like that, I could perhaps insist. No? I'll play Rook uh, B1. I don't know if in some variation this pawn might be hanging. So Chess Samurai says h5. Aha, I guess this is a good old King's Indian plan to play bishop h6. I guess that's your, your idea. And also, I don't have so much to do. So um, yeah, that might make sense. What would I play here? Uh, difficult to move with white, right? It's hard to find a good uh, idea for white. This bishop, it's really uh, not doing anything in this game. So rook d7, rook d8 says uh, Amazon. Carlos says queen e7. And actually, Carlos is closest to the move that was played in the game. In the game, black played here. It looks like a clumsy move, but they played queen d6. So, anyone, please uh, write in the chat. Why did he play queen d6? What's the point of queen d6 apart from threatening to take the pawn on d4? A hint, we're speaking pawn play today. That's right, Amazon, Hank, uh, you got it. We're provoking b5, says Chess Samurai. Yeah, but I could, of course, choose not to play it, right? Rook b1. However, now we would be ready to play f5. Maybe we would think that this is just about improving our pieces and, and blah, 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 bring the knight to d4 and so on. However, we should not forget about dynamics. This is a very strong move. Usually, when I play it, I am careful along this diagonal. 
and I don't have the rook on f8. But white pieces are so badly placed that they cannot really profit from this. You can see that there is an immediate threat of f4, and obviously we cannot play f3 because in that case f4 anyway, right? And the knight is hanging. So yeah, this is complex. I must say I'm not completely familiar with this combination in the King's Indian of bishop b7 and f5, but it works very well uh, in this situation. So here you can see also some kind of link between strat strategy and tactics, right? Uh, you need to rely on some tactical ideas also uh, in the strategic of battle. So I think black is clearly better here already. It's funny that he played rook, f rook d8 and then f5, uh, but uh, yeah. So that's what happened in the game. Yeah, have pressure on the diagonal and make white play d5, says Min Sphinx. Exactly. So queen d6 was played in the game. We don't have to spend too much time on this example because now white play b5. And you already know the plan, of course. Knight c7, good old King's Indian plan. Uh, very, very useful. This plan, of course, sometimes you even swap a bishop uh, for knight on f3 to make this plan even stronger and so on. Uh, yeah, you're right, just I'm right. The last, the last chapter in the book linked between tactics and strategy. I think you could write a whole book about that only. It's very entertaining and you can find some positions where actually we're not sure whether this is about tactics or strategy. After all, that's a human construction, right? Tactics and strategy, what does, what does that mean in the end? But uh, okay, we sh it's useful to think in those terms. But sometimes there is some like a great zone, gray zone, I think. Anyway, queen c2, knight c6, rook fd1. And a funny thing about this example is that black actually didn't hurry to play knight 4 You would say that uh, we should just play knight 5 as uh, soon as possible, but they didn't play this. I guess they didn't play it because they were thinking that maybe white can put the queen there, try some kind of blockade and so on. After all, we have this move in the pocket. We have the move knight 4 in the pocket. We won't play it now. We'll wait for them to see what they what they will do. In the game, they played queen e7. And actually, a chess summarize plan comes here very soon. a4, trying to go a5. Black just said, no, I won't allow that. Let's play a5 instead. White is probably not going to take. Then we can take back and put pressure on this pawn. Rook ac1. And here we go with just summarized plan. In case you don't know what I'm speaking about, it's your turn. What did black play here? Here we go. Black to play. Use your pawns to improve your position. What are we speaking about here? That's right. Chess Samurai, HDI Chess, Amazon. If you're King's Indian players, you must know about this plan also, of course. And if you aren't, still it's good for general knowledge. Oh, f5, you, uh, says Medina Tiger. I don't think that's possible, f5. I mean, I, I believe in Black's position, but uh, that's too much, probably. Right? So there is a smoother plan here. Knight e4, says Jerry and Roger. Yeah, that's the move that we have all the time, right? But uh, actually, what White, uh, what Black did here, they looked at these three pieces and then noticed that uh, White's bishop on e3 is probably the strongest one. The most important one. So what did black play here? All right, let's check with HDI chess. Your own HDI chess, what do you think? Fastest one on this one? H5. Good old King's Indian plan. You can also find it in the Yugoslav defense and other openings uh, with a similar structure. White played here, bishop d3, and you can guess black's next move. We don't have to look at the whole game. This is evident that, that black is happy to swap these bishops. The king, don't worry about him. There is no way they can, he can be attacked. And here you can also see that maybe, just maybe, black is about to play knight f4. Safe to say the move f5, sooner or later, this move might come up also. But in the meantime, who knows? Maybe black can double or e even triple the pieces on the, on the default. So, yeah, that's about it. In this example, I think black played really well. Please notice this key move, c5. It's very important to play it before white plays. C5. In a way, it makes me remember some Catalan positions. Some Catalan positions where black is about to, they have a bishop on b7, they want to go c5. And it's white who hurries to play c5, stopping black from playing c5 and also creating a, a protected square on, on d6. So, yeah, sometimes this happens with the pawns, right? One pawn stops, the, stops another pawn and so on. This can be very useful. So, c5, please don't forget this pattern. We want to bring the knight to d4 and in some other situation it also helps us to put some pressure on white and like like we saw here with the plan of even even pushing f5 any king's indian player of course must know about the move uh, f5 all right let's move on very quickly to our next example let's speak about something else we're playing with white pieces black has just played knight c5 i'll give you just one minute here to see if you can come up with the best uh, continuation with 
white. All right, go for it, guys. White to play and achieve a considerable advantage, OK? I'm sorry, Hank. That's a tactical mistake. Amazon, the same goes for you. Huge tactical mistake. I think you're doing this too quickly. Take your time. I'm sorry, Santos and HDI Chess. Uh, the pawn structure will not favor you, though. Uh, I'm sorry, Girir. You're hanging the B2 pawn. Don't uh, give away that pawn. So who is closest so far? Let's see. Tactical Magician and Pando, don't do that. You're just helping my structure, I think, if you play like that. Uh, so Hank Amazon, Medina Tiger, you're dropping the chains. Strategic Simmer and Chess Samurai. Yeah, that's OK. That's OK. They didn't play like that. I can explain to you why. But uh, you're definitely on the right track. So good work by Strategic Simmer and Chess Samurai. Nobody played the whole sequence. So we'll ask uh, Strategic Simmer, who was fastest here on this one, how do you continue with white? Aha, Knight A1. Sometimes our knights have to go backwards. Those of you who know about chess history, you know that famous uh, Nimsovich game, right? He had a knight on G3, he went to H1, and then he. Uh, reorganized this night in a, in a very nice way. However, this is about something else. It's simply that we don't have so many choices. So uh, knight a1 is the right move, but okay, of course, we should establish why is that uh, the case. If we play knight e4, like some people are saying, uh, two things I would like to tell you about this. When you have more space, like in this Maroxi structure, usually you don't want to swap too many pieces. Experts say that black is oh, happy to, to have uh, two or three minor pieces on the board. So. If you play knight e4 from strategical uh, considerations, it's not a very good idea because black is happy to have less pieces on the board. But tactically, there is the problem that you're actually uh, losing the change next turn here, no matter how you take. So this should be avoided, of course. But uh, but please notice what I'm saying. If black didn't see this move, knight b3, even then black would be happy that uh, they have uh, less pieces on the board already because this is a space disadvantage now. So black would probably profit from this. I don't know if maybe they can even take and uh, I'm not an expert on the on the Maroxi, but maybe it's something like E5 uh, might be okay for black here. Anyway, um, 92 is also, it's the right uh, spirit, but you're hanging the pawn on B2. Knight takes E5 is uh, not a good idea, I think, because we're altering the pawn structure in black's favor. I'm not sure if black should take with the b-pawn or the d-pawn. Um, I think both are okay. Maybe I would play with this one just to make it more easy. And now it looks like our previous example, right? Black is uh, managing, uh, they are achieving a very nice uh, square for their knight on d4. Or, or maybe they can even put the bishop there, I don't know. This is not uh, ideal for white, believe me. Um, so the best move by method of elimination, it's like strategic similar saying, knight a1. So now you can see the knight goes back and we are now ready to expand. We will use our pawns in a very smart way. Strategic Simmer will tell us how. Black played in the game, knight e7. Why did I play that? It becomes very evident after white's next move. Please go ahead, uh, Strategic Simmer. What did white play? When we have the Maroxi structure, what do we like to do? Okay, I hear no answer, so I'll play it myself. B4 was played in the game. White is taking space. You can see that this is a nice out outpost for the knight in this structure. Very often black plays A5 to prevent it. So B4, thanks. Strategic similar. Knight E6. So here, uh, you and uh, Chess Samurai were saying knight B3. I think this is perfectly fine, bringing back the knight. However, I suppose that in the game, Mihawk with white pieces, he didn't want to allow knight E5. I suspect that this was what he didn't like and bishop a4 might come up. Uh, because after all, like we were saying, black has a lot of uh, pieces and, and not so much space, so to speak, so they're happy to swap off some pieces. For that reason, um, white used his pawns again in a very smart fashion. So what do you think, Strategic Simmer? If you have a second chance and you see that knight e5 is coming up, what would you play here? Knight b3, yeah, I mean, that's what we were looking at, right? So if you if you if you go back after knight e6, if you know that they're about to play knight e5, what do you think white could play? Exactly. So please notice this kind of pawn structure. Once you have it, you have to 
make uh, sure that you can maintain it, right? There is a lot of maintenance work when you have this kind of bone structure. But here White has seen that black species are not well placed. They don't have so much pressure. Please notice how White's pawns are denying black of uh, good squares for their knights. So it's difficult to play with black here already. Very difficult. Nightmare, I would say, this, this position. No space for our pieces anymore. Um, they played in the game knight c7. I mean, um, if you look at it from this way, you can easily understand why in, in the, let's say very quickly, uh, let's, let's look from the beginning. It's easy to understand why in the Sicilian um, accelerated dragon, if, if you speak about this variation, let's say there is one variation which goes like, like this, right? You play um, something like this. Let's see if I can remember this. You play d6 first. How, how does this go? Oh, sorry. I think I lost my, my mind here. Well, I mean, we have one variation which goes simply like, like this, right? If I don't make it right, uh, uh, please let me know. But uh, this is one of the main variations, right? You play a5 and b3, I think. You take and you put the bishop there and you play knight d7. So it's easy to understand that black is happy to swap pieces because they have so little space. And very often white doesn't want to swap the bishops. No, they should stay. Both bishops should stay on the board. White doesn't want to swap pieces. Which was the other variation I wanted to talk about uh, very quickly. The Gurgenitze variation. How, how do I get there? I don't remember this anymore. Um, oh yeah, I think I remember now. So this is an even clearer case. When you play in this move order, you wait with bishop d7. So once they are about to play bishop e3, then you take on d4. I mean, they couldn't play bishop e3, I guess, due to knight g4, right? So bishop e2 or f3, then you take on d4 and you play bishop d7. Again, the same logic, right? We don't want to swap pieces because, uh, I mean, uh, black wants to swap pieces because they have less space. So they hurry to swap there and uh, later on, yeah, I don't know. They play something like, like this and they put the bishop there. And they... I think I, I made some mistake with the move order, but all right. Problem with the dragon is that e6 is a weakening move. Yeah, e6 we don't want to play for sure. Um, all right. Uh, please uh, watch your language now in the chat. I, I don't like uh, those uh, words, okay? Please uh, keep uh, good manners in the chat. Let's uh, bring back the example. Uh, sorry, let's bring back the example. So we're speaking about the fact that black is happy to swap pieces uh, in this uh, structure. And that's what's, what explains white's way of playing here. So if we do this again, all right, just for fun, let's request this, okay? Let's request just to make sure that everybody got it right. All right, I'll just give you 20 seconds, okay? Yeah, so everybody got it right. Nice. Exactly. We are gaining space. We deny blacks knights of uh, good squares. And uh, later on, we can uh, choose the plan according to, to the situation. All right. So uh, congratulations, Medina Tiger, Chess Samurai, Titan Chess, Hong Pao, Amazon, Strategic Simmer, Mies, Thanks, Carlos, RZ 2018, and so on. Uh, nice. So uh, Medina Tiger, you can... Play it out. How did white continue? Knight a1, denying the exchange. Okay, now it's time to gain space. Now we should not let them play knight e5. Aha, we gain more space. And by now you can see black's position is difficult. Like somebody was saying in the chat, whenever they go e6, there is a problem with the d6 pawn, right? So not much black can do here, really. So in the game, they played knight c7. White uh, this time said, okay. I'll accept the trade, I'll play knight b3, bringing in the knight, because at this point, if black takes on d5, we can actually improve our pawn structure. So actually both uh, captures are, are good here, but uh, which capture do you prefer? So please uh, write in the chat uh, which uh, trade do you prefer. Well, you can take with rook also, of course, but uh, C says Amazon, E says Titan says, aha. Mega Charles Rex takes with the e pawn, means takes with the c pawn, or is it 2018 with the e pawn? If there was a poll, we would make a poll here about which uh, pawn to take. Yeah, but most people are saying e takes d5, and uh, I also like imbalanced pawn structure, says Titan Chess. Yeah, that's a good point. Imbalanced pawn structure. Uh, yeah, it's actually similar to Nakamura's example, right? With opposite colors. Now we have the e file to work on. 
Also, you can see that we have a pawn majority on the queen side. And that's very important in this sense. But anyway, it, nothing wrong with the other capture. If you're a more technical player, you might like this way of playing. Knight d4, maybe you can uh, double the pieces on the c file. There is even this plan of b5 and knight c6, creating some kind of outpost on c6 and so on. A lot of uh, nice uh, plans here for, for white. But I like, of course, also e takes d5. It looks much more aggressive. Knight b8, knight d4. You can see the space again becomes a factor. White can use those squares which are available for like sheltered by the pawns and so on black tried e5 here to uh, liberate their position a little so what do you think guys should we take on passant should we take like that or should we just move the knight somewhere uh, write to the chat please which of these three options do you think is the best choice move knight says hank yeah knight with k exactly D takes E6, says Amazin. Amazin wants to take Opposon. Minsvenk says F takes E5. Aha, Strategic Simmer is speaking about something else. What if we stay to chess, uh, Strategic Simmer? I don't know what's the reason to be here in this lesson if uh, we're not interested in, in chess. I, I don't see the point. D takes E6, says Santos. F takes E, says Chess Samurai. So, a lot of different options. And, uh, yeah. We will have a look at uh, Hong Pao says F takes E5 also. Most people are saying F takes E5. Aha. Uh -huh. So actually that's what happened in the game also. If we take on E6, I think black improved a little. After all, they have these two central pawns. Uh, and maybe the knight can come back and so on. This doesn't seem like the end of the world for, for black. Uh, however, the other capture is very strong. We can probably move the knight also. But this one is very strong because here... Uh, white is ready to play on the on the queen side now. Black took with the pawn. Of course, they could have taken with a bishop or with a queen also. But here, I think there are some tactical issues, right? This this rook seems to be trapped here. Don't forget tactics. If queen takes one funny plan, actually is b5 and knight c6. This looks devastating, no? Creating a passed pawn. Black is not in time to make use of the square on c5. So yeah. Uh, they took with the pawn, and now you can see, speaking about uh, imbalanced pawn structure, look at this one. <laughs> Both sides have two passed pawns, but of course, the white passed pawns are much better placed. So after knight f3, white is ready now to go c5, and black is basically uh, yeah, doomed in this position. They saw that f5, there is bishop d5, so they played bishop f5 instead, so that the rook can move, or they can play f6, but of course, white just continued running on those pawns. So yeah. No way out here for black, really uh, devastating. Please notice the big transformation or metamorphosis which occurred in this game. We started like this, balanced position. We move forward like 10 moves and suddenly we have uh, this position. What a change in the position, right? These pawns are very strong. You don't have to calculate a lot of variations. You can just feel that these pawns will, will win the game for us somehow. Yeah, the rest is not so interesting. Queen A4, funny to see that if c6 uh black had the cheapo prefer prepare right they had prepared this little trick so we should not play c6 d6 is possible of course but maybe black can go for a blockade uh, who knows uh, maybe it it is better to keep flexibility so in the game white just played knight bishop c4 very nice again we can use our space advantage to improve our pieces now you can see that white is about to attack right so Black rooks are bad in front of the pawn. Yeah, good point, uh, Titan Chess. Actually, black rooks are restricted somehow by these pawns. Rook d3, bishop b3, says Amazin. Yeah, but d3 probably you don't want to put your rook down. But I see what you mean. Yeah, this is a very promising position for, for white. Knight c6 was played, but as they say in worse positions, uh, it's not easy to get away with tactics like, like that. Something will hang in the end. Uh, White puts Black's queen to the edge of the board. Yeah, to the edge, exactly. It's not in a good place. Knight g5 played by White here. No, sorry, this was also interesting, but they played bishop g5, sorry. Uh, some tactics coming up here. Oh, yeah, I should probably quiz you on the next move. Rook d7. All right, I'll quiz you on this one. A very pretty move. Try to find a move which combines attack and defense, okay? I'll just ask you for, okay, 45 seconds, 40 seconds. White's best move. Com oh, Troy Boy, you got it in one second. Nice. That's not bad. Uh, to find it so quickly. MM Thinker, you're on the right track. But I think the other move is even stronger because on your move, I might consider E4, maybe, can I? 
Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. But I like uh, more the other move. Played in the game. And played by Troy Boy. Uh -huh. Okay, Mega Charles Rex, you have the right piece, but another place. Hong Pao, you got it. Nice. Somebody said that uh, moving the queen backwards is one of the dif most difficult things in chess. I don't know if, if I agree on that, but uh, here perhaps we have a case. Oh, with that uh, hint, uh, Carlos, DL Warrior, Titan Chess, and RZ tonight, you got it also. All right, Troy Boy, you found this movie in one second, so you have to show this. Aha, queen f1, what a pretty move. We defend the rook so that now d takes c6 is threatened and also bishop e5 or bishop a6 perhaps is coming up. Yeah, that's a nice move. Yeah, I must say the Hungarian grandmaster was in complete control in this game. Probably queen e2 is also fine. Don't get me wrong, but intuitively it, it looks nicer to put the queen a little further away from black's pieces, right? No knight coming to d4 or yeah, something like that. So, yeah, that's how the game went. h6, we're now in desperation. Uh, Part of the game, bishop e5, and yeah, white went on to win this game. Yeah, it doesn't threaten. Yeah, queen e1, good point. If we play queen e1, we do defend the rook, but we don't threaten bishop e5 anymore. For sure, white is better anyway. Uh, I don't doubt that uh, maybe uh, white, this, even this pawn will fall off and so on. But okay, safe to say this is the best move. We should try to find the, the optimal choice. Nice. So what we have seen here, basically typical Maroxi structure. We would like to gain space. Of course, we don't want to take. Then we lose basically our space advantage, you could say. Uh, so we play knight a1, and then we continue to gain more space with b4 and f4. Uh, very interesting setup against the uh, hedgehog or against the uh, accelerated dragon, or call it what you like. If you can get away with this, usually black is suffering. That's my uh, impression. h4, h5. Oh. Interesting. Maybe you can play that also. Yeah, we can gain space on basically the whole board. But okay, don't forget that the more you push your pawns, also the more weaknesses you leave. And who knows? Maybe you would like to, to use the square with your queen, for example. So yeah, that depends. All right, let's uh, move on. Let's see something from the Sicilian. All right, let's see a game by. Yeah, but black can't attack. Yeah, you're right, uh, Minsvang. Good point. This game with a Brazilian Grandmaster Fier playing with the black pieces. White has just played g4. How should we react with the black pieces here? All right. I'll quiz you on the main line to see if you can repeat what black played in the game. All right. One minute 30. That should be enough. All right. So Chess Samurai is speaking Russian. Interesting. All right. Not bad. It's good to know many languages, especially uh, Russian language is very useful if, if you're into chess, of course, and a lot of chess literature in that language. Okay, Titan Chess, you got it, the first move. Um, if you play like that, I'll take the other pawn, Titan Chess. I won't say anything else because people are picking up my hints here. I'll take the, the right pawn, okay? The right, I mean, not the correct pawn, but the pawn to the right. Uh, yeah, Santos, I'll push my F pawn in that case. Okay. I saw this, I think, says Amazon. All right. That's entirely possible. I think this game was played, um, was it maybe a month ago? No, last year it was. All right. So, Titan Chess, Carlos, Troy Boy, and Amazon, MM Thinker, Hong Pao. Uh, you're on the right track, I think. Aha. Uh -huh. By the way, we talked about this some time ago. Hedgehog positions or Sicilian positions, we have a lot of dynamics. Basically, all the pawns can be used uh, for dynamic purposes. All right. So, uh, this was not so simple. It depends, of course. If you play the Sicilian with the black pieces, you must know about this stuff. If you don't, it's not that important. So, you could say also that strategy depends a lot on which openings you play. Uh, some ideas are more available in some systems and so on. This is an idea in the Benoni. Yeah, maybe, maybe something like the Benoni. Oh, so you saw, Carlos, the whole variation. Interesting. Anyway, let's uh, listen to Titan Chess. You were the fast, fastest one here. So please go ahead. What's your choice? G5. Well, if this is the first time you see it, you will probably fall off your chair. But for any Sicilian player, it's a very well-known pattern. We give up a pawn in order to secure this square. So if f takes d5, uh, 
who is speaking? Titan Chess. Yeah, 97 attacking this pawn. And of course, we are ready to uh, exploit that very, very nice square on e5. So that's the whole point. We get a fantastic knight in the center. It can sometimes go there. Um, I don't know which other ideas do we have. Let's play another move just to see what uh, Titan Chess would play with black. What do you think, Titan Chess? We're happy to have this knight, of course, but how would, should we improve? Aha, nice move. So I, I will have to play something like Bishop C1. And how would you continue the pressure here with the other knight? Yeah, I think you're on the right track. I mean, I'm not, uh, as usual, I'm not using an engine. I like to think by myself. But uh, this looks very promising. I guess we can later on play rook c8. I'm curious as to whether we can play something like h6. This would be my uh, wish to, to some, somehow soften up this, or maybe knight g6 or something like that. But Okay, this is good to know. Fantastic knight on e5. When you play the open Sicilian with black, you should be ready to give up a pawn uh, at some occasion if it can help. So, oh, d5 looks good also, says Titan Chess. Probably not at this point. Bishop e2 says Chess Samurai. Okay, so Chess Samurai says Bishop e2. Yeah, yeah, I understand. You want to control c4, but what about the open diagonal? Well, not open, but it's soon going to open, right? Night before. Okay, what do you think, uh, Titan Chess, if, if you play d5 first? Yeah, this is my one of my favorite uh, positions, this kind of structure. So I would love to play something like this. I don't know if it's working, but... Uh, I think white king is starting to look a little exposed, don't you think? Oh, rook c8 followed by rook takes c3. Yeah, that's another pretty plan, of course, in the in this structure, rook c8 and exchange sack on, on c3 and so on. Yeah, so it looks very difficult for white. Uh, and this explains, by the way, we can speak very quickly about the other moves that you were saying here. Some people are saying e5. I'm afraid this is not the right moment for e5. I would probably go here g5 first i think because i can get away with pawn takes and then once you put the knight i'll play something like knight d5 should i play like that oh you can maybe claim that you can now win this square for oh this guy is hanging okay i'll i won't play that i'll play f5 instead okay yeah f5 instead i'll, I'll play uh, so you can probably try to blockade me on the g5 square but okay you give up d5 also so i mean if you play something like that what would I play? Queen d2, maybe. Knight d5. Aha. Uh -huh. I don't think... I mean, you can play h6 and try to, to create a blockade, but uh, I don't like this so much for... Maybe rook d1. I don't like this so much for, for black, honestly. Uh, worst position ever. No, I don't think so. It's not that bad. But uh, not that good either, right? Knight d5 is coming, so... Yeah, better avoid this. Much nicer the other move that we looked at. Anyway, I, I should look at the other options that you're saying. 97, some people are saying, yeah, this is the lazy choice. If you don't want to calculate variations, you can play like that. G5, probably. White will play bishop G2, and they have some plan of bringing the queen to H5. Okay, good old Sicilian plan. Play something like that. Even knight F8 might come up if necessary. F6 says Amazon. That can't be here, right? F6 looks like very weakening to the E6 pawn. After G5, E5. How about E5 says means things? For whom? For black, you mean E5? Yeah, maybe, maybe. That's probably a better choice. Yeah, yeah, you're right. E5, you can play here, and I'll play something like, I don't know, H4, maybe you can take. And Now you can put a knight on E5, and I can put my knight on D5. So maybe this compensates, right? Queen E2, Queen G2, and then throw H4, H5. Yeah, something like that. I think black is not doing that badly, but uh, we can look for something better. All right, what else? D5, some people are saying, of course, D5 is a typical reaction. When they play G4, we try to push D5. However, on this occasion, I think I take, I guess, yeah, those of you who said D5, what was your intention now? F6, that's not here, right? Um, what do you want to play here? Oh, after knight d8, but no, after knight d7. Yeah, I don't know if, if that's really re relevant. We can, of course, look into it again. Knight d7, g5, you want to play f6 here. Yeah, I don't like this move, honestly. Uh, but okay, we should never uh, underrate anything if we haven't looked at it. Maybe bishop g4, I don't know. You, you want to take, you let me put the bishop there? f5 says Titan says. All right, if you say so. Yeah, something with the white light squash, right? So I don't believe in f6. It's not a common guest in the Sicilian. That's more for the French defense, perhaps. But okay. So d5, some people are saying, I don't know if e5 is possible also. 
But okay, my first impression would be to take just on, on. Uh, I don't know if I understand this really. I can maybe even take, perhaps. Is that possible? Well, something is hanging here and there and so on. Yeah, I don't know. Confusing uh, position. So maybe we should play e5 instead uh, with white. So maybe this restricts black a little. Yeah, compensation in the other variation. Anyway, what do you think if we move on and have a look at uh, what happened in the game? 97, 92, white as well. All right. Uh, yeah, that's last word by Titan Chess. Anyway, Titan Chess, if you say that, I think I can think of a pawn move here. Anyone, can you think of a pawn move for black? Yeah, exactly, Carlos. G5, that's what I would think of here. So I don't know what's going on here. That's why the Sicilian is such an entertaining opening, you know, because we have so many uh, dynamic possibilities. Now we're fighting against this plan. Okay, you can say it's also common in the French. Yeah, let's move on. Aha, Chess Samurai. I also like the move G5. Interesting strategical touch. And that's what happened in the game, just that they played it at a different moment. They played it here. All right. So White played in the game E5. And here, all of you, uh, those of who said g5 they wanted to take on e5 however in that case i'll take on g5 and this cannot be that clear because i can put my knight on e4 knight xd4 is that uh, really working this is what carlos says but okay carlos i'll take it i don't see your tactical compensation here oh but before but when in, in that case yeah okay you're speaking about the solution yeah right that's correct. So I don't know uh, if we uh, try to, to understand this correctly. We play g5. Our plan is to capitalize on this square on e5. So if they take, we'll play knight e7 and we put a knight on e5 or maybe the other knight and, and so on. However, white says, no, I don't want that. I'll play e5 myself. Like in the Benoni, you have this idea in the Benoni, right? Uh, you know what I mean? If I. Uh, all right, very quickly. If we look at some. Some Benoni variation, I don't know, you can choose for yourself. Let's see, some Benoni. Uh, did you speak about this last time, maybe? Sorry if we already talked about this. But uh, yeah, it's better to do it one more time than one uh, less time. So yeah, which, which variation might this happen? I don't know, I'm just improvising here a little, uh, just in case. So if, if you play something like this, and let's say you play, I don't know, H5, probably I'm going to mess this up. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I play f4 and you play rook e8 and I'll put my bishop, uh, I, th I think I didn't make, I haven't played this in the correct way. Sorry guys, I got it wrong here, but okay, I, I'm just, I just want to show you the, the idea. Let's play some random move with black. So this is what I'm speaking about. So if you play f5, they'll put the knight on e5. So what do you do? Well, you play e5 yourself and then you play e5. All right, but this was a bad, uh, very bad example. Sorry guys, this is not how you play the Benoni with black. Uh, I just lost track here in this uh, move order. Maybe if I put the knight on g3, this would make more sense. So, uh, hold on. G give me another chance. Let's put the knight here. I think this will work out much better. Yeah, I think so. So, if we play like this instead, let's say we play something like that. At some point, uh, black plays, uh, let's say black plays h5 at some point. Maybe here. We put our bishop there, maybe. Um, and let's say they play queen seven. Here we go again, right? E5 and we play F5 and H4, knight E4. Yeah, you get the picture. We don't play F5 because in that case, they get the E5 square, right? We shouldn't do this. But we play E5 first. And then we play E5, yeah, and we put, put the, something on E5. All right. Uh, yeah, then it's a common idea. Exactly. So you can perhaps say that this is somehow linked to this idea. If we go back to this position, if we play here, g5 and they play e5 we should not take on e5 because in that case they'll take on g5 and we can unfortunately not use the square anymore so uh yeah you got it uh, titan chess and carlos uh, who was moving the pieces by the way who has the pawn titan chess all right so please go ahead what did grandmaster fier play at this moment uh, no he didn't play like that because then you lose a piece right oh you want you want to continue here really uh, I don't follow Titan Chess. Is this really good for you? D5. I'm, I'm, not, uh, <laughs> I'm not convinced by this. Sorry. Because I know the game also. I know what happened in the game. How many pawns you have here? One pawn. You have one pawn for the piece. Is that really enough? I mean, I, lo I love the open to but don't you think this is too much? 
well, uh, something to analyze, but just one pawn for the piece, I think that's a little too optimistic. Maybe some bishop g2, play some prophylactic moves and so on. Uh, black is better, says the Teddy Simmer. All right, if you say so. I'm not convinced about that. Um, knight takes d4. Yeah, before, I, I guess you mean. Before, not here. No, there is no knight anymore. So let's uh, let's go back to the position. I lost content here. So here we're back. So g5, e5. Uh, who is moving the pieces? Uh, Titan says. Yeah, exactly. Bravo. That's the move. Knight takes d4. Strategy and tactics intertwined. You can see what's going on here. If I take the long diagonal, it's opened. You can take there. This is perfectly possible. However, in the game, yeah, I mean, I'll play something like king g1 here. Uh, in the game, black took on f4 instead. It's a more flexible choice. You can see that he's waiting for the right moment to commit the knight. Not uh, yet. After bishop takes f4, he played d takes e5. Very interesting, no? He's waiting for the right moment to play this move. He knows that the bishop must move anyway. So, who is saying black is better, white is better? Well, let's let's stick to the subject, okay? White is in, under pressure. Please notice the funny detail that we're not in time to swap queens because black will take it that way, giving check and then pick up the bishop next turn. So no queen exchange here, which would be a relief for white, right? Because they have a king, which is very exposed. Bishop e3 was played in the game. And uh, yeah, strategic, uh, who was speaking? Titan, Titan chess. Okay, Titan chess, you can guess the next move, right? That's right, knight e4, nice centralizing knight, king g1, and we're speaking pawn play here, strategic simmer. No, it's Titan chess, f5, exactly. Very good move. This pawn mass is now, compare this to the other variation that you were showing me when we had a, just one pawn for the piece. Here we have one, two, three, two pawns for the piece, and also we have a lot of activity. Uh, if bishop h3, here there is a very pretty move, which I think I'll quiz all of you for this move. Just to see your tactical vision here, 30 seconds. Can you find a pretty move? I think some of you will. And if you play like that, Medina Tiger and Tactical Magician, you get back some of the material. But uh, is that the best you can get here? So I think... Uh, Okay, that's a nice move also by Minsvengs. I like that move. But nobody plays the move that I was uh, asking for. Anyway, most of you... Okay, awesome, Owen, Strategic, Simmer, and Quacky. All right, uh, awesome, Owen. What is your choice here? Yeah, that's a pretty move. That's what I call swapping the defender, the defending piece. This bishop is very important. Unfortunately, it cannot go back because in that case, uh, awesome, Owen... We're waiting for you. Exactly. Now, white cannot sack. Please notice that in the beginning, if you play knight f3, white would be more than happy just to sack in order to turn the tables here, right? Rook takes and maybe rook d7, and white at least has some compensation and so on, some activity. So, very strong move, bishop d5. I'm not saying it's the only move. Some people were saying rook f7 to bring in the rook. Others were saying king f7 to bring in the rook in, the, in another way. Uh, maybe this works also. It looks interesting. You have some idea with also giving check here. It might even be mate. So, uh, yeah. Interesting. However, I think bishop d5, it was the best move when I checked this game. Very difficult for white to, to play something here in this position. A lot of tactical issues. Uh, what can they play? Queen d2? I don't think so, no, because we can probably even push f4, right? Is that possible? Anyone with a sharp tactical eye, what would you play with black here? Uh, looks that there are many. Knight takes it too. Wow, that's a pretty move. Like, no, you can't play like that, right? You're losing them. Yeah, that was not a good idea. Knight takes b3. Says, yeah, that's probably better. If I take on g5, whose queen is falling? Okay, so you just take back. Right, right, right. I agree with you. Yeah, this is just winning. Right, or queen takes it too. Nice. So in the game, I hope this is not too confusing. In the game, after... Uh, the move, knight takes d4, bishop takes e4, g takes e4, bishop takes e4, d takes e5, bishop e3, knight e4, king g1, f5. They just took on d4, and uh, black took back on d4, bishop takes d4. Here we have a last accuracy by, uh, by the grandmaster. Of course, we should not take on g4, that would be suicide. Instead, we have a good move here. Anyone, what would you play with uh, black here?
But choose carefully, please. Choose carefully. If you play like that, ta tactical magician, you end up a piece down, right? Uh, today's topic, pawn play. All right. Chess Samurai RZ 2018. You got it. Titan Chess. Okay, now you know it's a pawn involved, right? So it's easier to find the move. It's such a good hint. Aha. Yeah, I, I cannot name all of you, uh, but uh, you're sure many who got this right. The fastest one without hints was RZ 2018. All right, RZ, what do you play? Very, very pretty move. I must say, what a nice move. We're about to play Bishop C5 if they take. And if they don't take, well, then we can safely take on G4 because our king is not in uh, danger anymore. So, yeah, that's what happened in this game. They took on F5 and now Black was ready to take on D4 and they ended up winning this uh, endgame. Although it, it there were some more complexities in this game, but Okay, black is uh, better here after queen takes, pawn takes, bishop pair, and so on. Uh, actually, they didn't win material, right? They didn't win material, but they have a very nice position here. Uh, please notice, by the way, somebody was saying queen takes d4. Well, that's too much, right? That's too much. You cannot play like that uh, here for sure. White's material advantage amounts to something. So, very nice example. Yeah, strategic symbol. You can go. No problem. Nice seeing you. See you next week or next time. Bye bye. So G5, very strong dynamic idea in the Sicilian. G5, please remember this pattern. And uh, also what White tried in the game, very clever, like anti blockade idea from the Benoni. However, Black noticed Knight takes D4, very pretty uh, way to play here with the Black pieces. Uh, we are targeting the White King. So if you play White, by the way, in the Sicilian, uh, careful with this move G4, right? <laughs> Try to play it at the right moment. Maybe it's actually better to play it with the King on. On G1, possibly. So uh, let's continue. All right. What else? Let's see one of the brightest players uh, right now uh, from India, uh, Nihal, playing with the black pieces. Let's see something with less material. You're playing with the black pieces. I would like to know which is the best way to continue here with black. How do you think? Nihal continued in this position against former uh, under 20 world champion Mag Sodlu. All right, Titan Chess, Chess Samurai, you got it. Great work. That's exactly what happened in the game. Please notice that this time Black is not better or anything. They're just trying to uh, do the best they can to, to get some play and, and make it life difficult for their opponent. All right, Amazon HDI Chess, you got it. That's Completely correct. Don't forget today we're speaking pawn play. Pawn play involves a lot of different ideas like uh, creating weaknesses, uh, create the past pawn, push the majority, uh, restrict the opponents, the pieces, and so on. All right, uh, HDHS, Strategic Simmer, Hong Pao, Mega Charles Rex, MM Thinker, you all got it. Great work. Okay, after all, if you know that pawns are involved, that probably means that. Uh, it's not so difficult. Okay, I see the point, Tactical Magician and Mean Swanks, but I think I know the drawback to that. The same goes for Hank. I think I know the drawback. You can probably figure it out uh, yourself. So uh, let's listen to Hong Pao. What do you think, Hong Pao? How should Black continue here? All right, A5. Please notice, guys, this is the typical situation with majorities and minorities. Sometimes we push the majority, at, uh, so a majority attack, and sometimes minority attack. Here, this is a very good minority attack. We would like to play a4, and no matter what happens, white will be left with a weakness. Okay, you can also say it's a passed pawn, right? But it depends on how the pieces are placed and so on. For example, the knight is ready to attack that pawn. All right, Max Soder played e3. What do you play, uh, Hong Pao? We just continue with the plan. And I think around here there was a mistake by, by white. Uh, okay, they could take, of course, but then still this pawn is, is weak, right? This pawn is, is a weakness for white. In the game, they played b4 and... Nihal, hurry to play. Yeah, I, I usually go a little over, but not 25 minutes, I guess. I'll, I'll do a little less today. So A3 was played in the game. Very nice move. Please notice the engines will tell you that this is equal. But for humans, this is uh, very nice for Black already. They have two weaknesses to work on. And this kind of pawn push with a, with a A pawn, you can think of the pawn push with the H, H pawn. The Alpha Zero idea, some people say, although I claim that this was known 
for many years this plan of pushing our rook pawns. So this worked out very well. Nihal had a nice advantage. Rook b1, queen f5, knight e1, knight c7, a lot of maneuvering here. The knight will come to c3 later on. I guess we can improve on, uh, on black's white's play here, but uh, still it's something we have. We have something to play on, right? This is how the game went later on. Uh, black went on to win here. Rook c8 and uh, black went on to win. So simple technique. A5 to play A4. Uh, please notice that if you play something else here, like rook c8, rook b8 or rook c4, like some people are saying, white can probably play a3. And now I'm afraid that actually this is uh, better for white. The structure is already favorable to white. For example, in pawn end games, this would be a bad structure for black because white has a protected pass pawn, right? So, yeah, please uh, notice no, that it's a very good idea to play a3 here. Simple example about the minority attack. Okay, let's uh, have a look at something else. Uh, what might be interesting for for you guys? Let's have a look at at this one. Let's see if we can get this right. I'll pick some simpler examples to make this a little faster. Uh, here we have a game between Kovalenko with white pieces and Stevich playing black. So, as you can see, this is some kind of Rai Lopez uh, Berlin variation, I think. Uh, white plays some close system and black has the bishop pair, nice knight on d4 and so on. So, I don't know what you would think if you see this position. Maybe you would think that black is better here. But I don't think so. I think white is better. But only if you can find the right plan at this point. So, I'll play out the first uh, three moves here. It's your move with the black pieces. Uh, all right, says Samurai. No problem. Nice have, having seen you today. See you next time. Bye-bye. Here we go. White to play and get the advantage, okay? How should we continue in this complex position? Okay, Giril, you're on the right track, definitely. Says Samurai, that's probably just as fine as what I played in the game. Um, some small subtleties there. And uh, I wouldn't move that knight, but uh, okay, I guess it's possible also that you play. So Santos, you're on the right track. Uh, Amazon and Titan Chess, I wouldn't touch the pawn on that side of the board, to be honest. HDI Chess, exactly, that's what they played in the game. So most people got, the, got it right, the plan, and uh, there are different ways in which we can continue here, the plan. But I think what they played in the game was very um, convincing, and HDI Chess is our only winner so far. Only HDI Chess managed to f follow in the footsteps of the Latvian Grandmaster. All right. So, please don't forget that knights usually prefer closed positions more than bishops. That's a very simple strategical principle, but I think you can apply it to this position also. Uh, closed positions, that's what knights usually love. All right. Uh, C3 says Amazon. That's very uh, surprising. But uh, if you say so, yeah, you want to get, dislodge this knight, something like that. What would I play against your move? Uh, good question. Would I take? How would you take back Amazon with a queen? Is that so? Maybe I can use this plan A5. Maybe you have seen the. Well, we just saw it, right? We just saw this plan. Uh, and I also remember Carson, McShane Carson. That was a game like that, also in the Royal Opus, very famous where. Black used this, this minority tech to soften up these pawns. Then knight xc3 says Amazon. Okay, you changed your mind when you saw my plan. Okay, now your knight is hindering this plan of, uh, of a5, a4. Yeah, maybe you're right. After all, I have a bad pawn structure, right? That's probably your argument here. Um, I see what you mean. Probably this is also playable. I'm not exactly sure how to continue with the black pieces here. Um, what would I play with black here? Good question. Maybe I should take on f4. And I should wait for you to take so that you repair my pawn structure. Does that make sense? But okay, I don't know what, what will come next. Um, good question. Very tough, uh, tough position to play with black also. Uh, maybe, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there is something else. Maybe I can also retreat tonight. Maybe this is better. I'll retreat tonight instead. And I'll, this is definitely what I'm going to play. A5, A4 in Carlson's spirit. Um, and C4 says... Amazon. All right, but you're begging for a5, right? Uh, I have to try to create counterplay on this side. f5 and c4. Yeah, 
but uh, okay you have the right to, to this opinion but have a look at what happened in the game instead please notice that if you stay with the pawns like this you have a very solid structure on the queen side so in the game they play just like hdi chess is proposing here so please go ahead hdi chess how is your variation f5 we simply don't like the that old saying goes we don't touch our pawns on the side where we're uh, weaker you could say we play now for expansion on the king side so rook g1 you can see what's coming we're going to move away that knight black played in the game bishop e8 and uh, once we move the knight it's very very easy to understand what white has in mind they're about to attack full scale attack we don't have any reason to touch uh, the pawns on this side. We just want to attack black. In the game, black uh, played g5 here. I think another plan for black was this king escape, right? Something like this, move over. But you know what's interesting here? Amazon's plan of c3 might become very interesting if black's king is placed in the center, for example. I guess white could just continue, and at some point, uh, you can even try to open up the c-file also. Like in that famous game, Karpov, Gligoris, you can see that plan. Karpov started attacking on the king side, and then suddenly he played a3, opening up the queen side where black's king was going. So no matter what happens here, uh, black is in trouble after knight f1. Yeah, it's in the it's in the mastering strategy. Of course, you, you can find this uh, this plan. It's, it's a good plan to know. So in the game, they played g5 here. Those of you who play the king's Indian with white, maybe you have seen in the, in the king's Indian when the black pawns comes to f4, you play g4. It's something like that. However, uh white didn't uh, get distracted they could just continue their attack so anyway what do you think white should play here uh h4 says uh, amazon h4 if i play g4 i'm just curious could i play g4 or it's bad i'm just trying to close the position completely uh amazon maybe this doesn't work yeah i i agree with means banks here uh, g4 was played in the game that's nicer no because then we get h4 and for sure we will open up a file here rook f7 was played in the game h4 h6 oh f takes g6 somebody's saying oh you want to play f takes g6 really that goes against logic don't you think you're opening up the position for black also i could play something like pawn takes maybe and try to push f5 or am i missing something i don't think you should play like that yeah it's better to keep it closed right just rely on this typical plan aha uh -huh. so this is how the game went uh, now white starts preparing invasion on the h file that's what happened in the game black had no chance in this game i don't know I, I was looking at this game but i couldn't find a way for black to to survive it's very hard for black to do anything in this game white later on played rook h3 they had, had a strong attack and they went on to win you can see that the knight is also waiting to get into the game so yeah what was this about then well we arranged our rooks on the open file it seems that if white was going to take but actually if you take i think i could even take with the pawn and i'm just defending on the f5 however much stronger to play f5 amazon you want to say something please go ahead you raised your hand no all right so uh, we're about to finish uh, today's uh, work we're about to finish let's see if we can uh, wrap this up after g4 after h4 can we go another h2 all right let's see if you can if you can guide me here rook t1 bishop e8 after g5 g4 here no h4 instead of g4 yeah h4 instead of g4 all right so you said h4 and i was I trying to make g4 work sorry i was thinking about knight h2 aha i was thinking about closing the position here because after all, I'm, I'm protecting the pawn. So if it becomes close to the position, it's hard for us to, to attack. Maybe you could include bishop h6, though. Yeah, like Hank is saying. Exactly. Maybe this would make your uh, idea work. And then play knight h2. I don't know if this works. It looks like I'm going to lose this pawn, right? Yeah, this looks annoying for, for black. So maybe that's also possible, uh, as far as I can see. So, yeah. Probably you can start with h4 also. That that looks uh, entirely possible. So no matter what happens here, uncomfortable for black, uh, white. Also, you can, one simple observation. You have so many pieces on the king side. So it's clear that once you start attacking, black has, for example, this rook, which is not participating and so on. Uh, all right, let's have a look at another example. Dynamics. Dynamics is one important part of chess strategy. Um, related to pawn play in my opinion 
here we go uh, italian grandmaster basso with white pieces uh, what do you think white should play in this position let's see here if we can get this right um, all right here we go the third move is slightly more difficult okay Slightly more difficult to third move. So, what do you think White should do in this position? Please notice that uh, Black has a, perhaps a better pawn structure. White has a hole on e5, you can say, weak pawn on e4. However, White is more active here. So, how can you exploit that situation? All right. So, Titan Chess and Hank, you're on the right track. Uh, I understand your desire to play like that on the move three, but I think you're showing your cards too quickly. I guess I could, I could take and I could play Bishop e6, right? And I'll try to get rook d8 in. Uh, the b7 pawn is on the house. I can give up that pawn. Um, what else? The tactical magician, that move was played later in the game. If you play it now, I'm pretty sure I would play queen e5, right? And also, Owen, you're for sure on the right track. Um, but this is somehow about showing our cards also, right? We have more space. We have better development. Um, we have greater choice of action, no? So we should use uh, flexibility a lot. Strategic Simmer and Hong Pao, that's a very nice idea. I like it. They didn't play like that in the game, but definitely that's something that we could consider also. All right, so Min Sveng, you got it completely right. Congratulations. Let's listen to Min Sveng on this one. This is the second last, right? We will do one more and then we will call it a day. All right, stop uh, spamming in the chat. I don't like that. All right. So please go ahead, Min Sphinx. E5, what a nice move. Please remember this pattern. We were speaking about anti blockade. Here we are again. If you play some random move like rook f1, black could play queen a5. Please notice there are no knights which can threaten this queen. There is no Dorscott bishop and so on. Uh, black would be very happy if the situation remains in this way. If they could play just bishop d7 and rook e8 and so on. Uh, so yeah, we should play, play dynamically here. Remember what Dorfman used to say, there is evolution and revolution, okay? Black would like to just evolve here, bring out the pieces. White should try to make revolution, and that's what Minsfeng did here with e5. All right, let's check the variations. If I take with a pawn, Minsfeng, what do you have in, on your mind here? How would you continue with white? What is the effect of black having played d takes e5? This is the second last. I'll do one more. Okay, strategic symbol. I'll do one more and then we finish. E4 square? Yeah, the E4 square and also uh, something happens on the D file, right? Or am I am I mistaken? Uh, yeah, but not now. Well, I, I'm not sure. Probably what you're saying is that if I play D6 uh, and I play it again, they will go rook D7 and the pawn is hanging. But actually, you can uh, play something else after C takes D6. There is an intermediate move here, which is very strong. Remember what we said from the very beginning, that if we play rook f1, black will play queen e5. So once we played e5, actually we're also taking away the square for black's queen. So taking this into account, what would you play here? Exactly, rook f1. Unfortunately, the black queen doesn't have many squares to choose from now because it must keep track of this pawn. So I would play something like queen g6, and uh, now it's different now because you will get another tempo. Uh, you can take now, and uh, here you can, instead of protecting the pawn, you have a good move here, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm sorry. This uh, is supposed to be strategy, but we're in tactics now. But you have a very nice uh, tactical move here. Exactly. Amazing. Got it. Bishop e4. Exactly. Very nice. If I take with the queen, it hangs here. And if I take with the rook, you can see for yourself loose pieces. We can perhaps exploit the loose bishop on c8. Oh, we just take on g6. Is that so? Really? I don't think it's that simple, is it? Yeah, queen c2, exactly, Giri, that's what I think, queen c2. Black must be in big trouble here. They have to protect the bishop and the queen, I guess, queen e6. I don't know if you play bishop f5, maybe. There must be something here, right? Okay, bishop f5, let's set up for that. So white is winning. It's not a miracle because, after all, white species were much more active than black species from the very beginning. Dynamics, when we try to transform the position to our favor, so... E5, the correct move here, E5, if pawn takes D6, very strong attack for, for white. In the game, they took with the rook instead, which makes sense because uh, after rook takes, you can see that if 
pawn takes d6 does no longer threaten the rook, right? Uh, by the, exactly, that's the move which some people didn't notice. Uh, some people are saying h4. I like this move very much. h4, it looks very nice. Also, probably that's just as, uh, as strong as what happened in the game. Um, I don't know if I can take it and perhaps try to bring the bishop to f5. I think that's what I would try to play with black here. But uh, okay, it looks nice for white still. But I think what they played in the game was even stronger. Please notice that if we play d6 straight away, we give black some information, right? We give black some information. Black can maybe play something like bishop e6. Or black can take first and, and put the bishop on f5 so that the rook can come to d8. However, if we wait with this move d6, it's more unpleasant for, for black because it's not so easy to develop this bishop. If it goes there, maybe there is some c6 move and so on. So uh, rook c1 is what uh, Minsvenx was saying here. And that's what uh, Basso played in the game. Rook c1, very good move. Now rerouting the rook to the attack. How black would have loved to use this e5 square with the queen, but they can't. Queen g. Oh, sorry, I missed the move here. Sorry. Uh, rook c1. Black played h6, uh, securing this pawn. White hurried to put the rook in the right place. Rook f1, queen g6. There was the move queen e2. Provocation here, because when black plays f6, you can see that this diagonal was weakened. What did white play here, uh, means Sphinx? Exactly. So now it's basically game over here. The queen might come to a2. The bishop might come to d5. Black played c6. That's already a strategical surrender because this pawn is so strong and also the king is, is weak. Interestingly, if you remove the queens, maybe black can survive here, right? But with queens on the board, I think they are uh, lost. Bishop e5, very nice move. White stars working on the attack after f5. Uh, anyone, what do you think white plays here? Let's quiz you on this one just to see if you're still awake. Oh, you want to sacrifice. Interesting. Okay, HDI chess, you got it. I wouldn't sacrifice in this uh, promising position. <laughs> I would play like uh, HDI chess, Mega Charles, Rex, RZ, and Tactical Magician or saying Hong Pao also. Aha, okay, Mega Charles, Rex, uh, which is your move here? Logics of attack, right? Excellent. We have three pieces attacking. They only have two pieces. Sorry. They only have two pieces defending. The rook is lacking. So that's their downfall. They're lost thanks to this little tactical detail, right? What's wrong with queen f3? Yeah, nothing, I guess. Nothing. It just looks nicer to put the queen on f2, don't you think? But uh, yeah, probably nothing is wrong with your move. So, okay, MM Thinker. I agree with you. It just looks more aesthetic to put the queen here. Maybe some other difference also. Uh, Anyway, so the game went something like that. Queen f2, bishop e6, white just took on f5. By now, the endgame will be winning thanks to the protected pass pawn. Queen f7 and white uh, went on to win here. Queen f6, very technical play. Black resigned at this point. Horrible endgame with this pawn on d6. So after all, what we have seen here, typical clash between dynamic and static factors. Black has a better pawn structure, I would say. Um, the bishop, you could also claim, is perhaps better than white's bishop. However, it's about time here. White has more pieces in, pl in play. So uh, we should hurry to play e5 here, opening up the position. And uh, no matter how black reacts, they are in trouble here. Oh, by the way, queen takes e5 would fail to rook e4, right? With a very strong mating attack. Or attack. Pawn takes very nice move, rook c1. Again, we have backwards moves, which are sometimes difficult for us to, uh, to, to notice. All right, time for our last example today. This is a quick example. It's about uh, activity again from the FIDE World Cup, uh, Women's World Cup, with the white pieces, Muzichuk, and playing black is Kostenyuk. Black uh, is playing some Italian here with the black pieces. G5 was the last move in the game. I would like to know how you think that Alexandra Kostenyuk uh, replied at this point of the game. All right. So I'll quiz you just for. Uh, the first moves here. All right. Please don't forget the topic of today's lesson, pawn play, using our pawns in a clever way in order to improve our position in different ways. Okay. How to cope with white's pressure on the king side. All right, uh, Giri, you're on the right track. That's definitely in the right spirit. 
I think your move order would also give you an advantage. The same goes for Tactical Magician. Uh, Kostenyuk didn't play like that, but uh, you're definitely on the right track. Okay, Santos, great work. You got it 100% right. Mean Swanks and Mega Charles Rex, I'm not convinced about that move. I guess I'll just take it with a knight, okay? Okay, so only Santos got this right. Maybe you're tired after so much work. Yeah, probably. It's a good moment for a counterattack. That would be my hint here. It's a good moment to go for a counter. Hong Pao, you're very close also. Yeah, that's in the right spirit. Maybe I can play Bishop G5 there, Hong Pao. I don't know if that is a concern to you. Perhaps not. Anyway, let's listen to Santos, who is the only one who got this one 100%. Right, so please go ahead, uh, Santos. How do you play here? F5, that's a very nice move. Don't you think? It's not what I would uh, think of in the first place. It's a move that you have to work on. I mean, you have to look into the position to understand this move. But simply white was going to take. And uh, if we take, we just invite the white pieces to, to the attack. We don't want to play that. Maybe they can, that is some idea with taking and playing d4, or maybe perhaps even d4 straight away. Think of something like knight c5 and, oh, sorry. Uh, think of something like, uh, where are we? I cannot do this properly. Knight takes d5. If you play something like knight c5 here, I mean, something like d4 and uh, look for yourself. Maybe even mate is coming up here. So we shouldn't underestimate white's uh, attack. So f5, fantastic move. We just say, you can have the pawn, but now it's my turn to attack. If white plays g6, you can see the bishop will go down. And uh, this is just better for black. Believe it or not, white is, I mean, white is not even close to achieving some kind of sacrifice. Black can always play f4 if necessary, and this pawn might fall off later on. One thing I noticed here is that if white plays d4, targeting the pawn on f5, what would you play, Santos? Exactly. So we gain some space, white will play knight h four can they play that no i don't think so i will just take it right so i don't know what would happen here uh, black is in in charge here for sure white is in trouble so in the game instead after this move f5 also if they take on passant you can see for yourself this is very nice for black because now the f5 is open we can bring in the other rook all our pieces are participating now so in the game they just took on h6 and uh, yeah please go ahead uh, santos how do you continue here some people are saying here queen f8, some people are saying f4, but what Santos played is much simpler because after bishop takes, we are more than happy to move our rook because now it's our turn to attack. Uh, let me tell you that black is almost winning in this position. It's very, very difficult for white to defend. If king f1, you have this king uh, escape again. However, black could just bring in more pieces to the attack. But sooner or later, I'm pretty sure that uh, black would prevail here. After all, white is playing with the rook down and so on. This looks difficult for white. In the game, after rook g8, white played bishop b3. Uh, interestingly, you could give the exchange here. or Well, it's not even the exchange, right? You win material here. But uh, Kostenyuk didn't hurry. She played in very technical fashion. She played queen f6 first. Uh, I like this approach. Very practical. Giving away the exchange. However, it's not the numbers who count, which count here. It's the activity. You can see for yourself, f4 is coming up. There is some idea with e4 also clearing a square for the knight. Uh, white didn't know what really to do here. They played bishop g5. Yeah, yeah, the bishop is hanging for sure. Uh, black simply took a funny material relation here. We have, uh, what do we have, by the way? Three pieces against uh, two rooks. So you would say it's roughly level, no? Three pieces versus two rooks. However, in this position, you can see that the nature of this position is very much in favor of the knights, of the bishops, or the minor pieces. The rooks are not particularly active here. So, yeah. Black, and king safety, of course, Amazon, you're right. King safety is very much in black's favor. And, yeah. yeah. Material is equal here, you, you could say, roughly. However, uh, uh, the activity is just devastating here. E4 is coming up. Black went on to win. So, interesting game, right? Interesting case. G5. Uh, our first impression would be to say, hey, what should we do here? They're going to take this pawn. If we take it, oh, no, they will attack us and so on. We would get nervous, but Kostanyuk, of course, didn't get nervous. Probably she was very happy when this happened. G5 was probably a mistake. F5, it's a very, very strong move. It's black who's taking over now. So please don't forget about the pawns, the soul of chess. That's what Philidor said uh, back in those days. Uh, 
if we can use our pawns in a clever way, for sure we can uh, improve our general uh, level. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this session about pawn play. I think uh, next week we will do our last uh, session on pawn play. I still have some examples left, believe it or not. So thanks a lot for joining in today. Thanks uh, to Chess Dojo, Chessable, uh, USCS. Uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.